Yo guys, what's up? Drum here. Sorry, I was eating a sandwich, but I am working on getting my warrior as caught up as possible for TOC. TOC is just such a freaking blast of a patch, and I don't want to miss out on my warrior. So here's exactly what I'm doing to get as caught up as quickly as I can. The first thing I'm doing is leveling to 80 as fast as I possibly can. There's a couple things I didn't know when I started leveling my warrior that I wanted to tell you guys. The first thing is that you can actually have flying at level 60 in the Outlands. That was a huge shock to me because I've been riding around on a land mount this whole time. Also, for some reason, I completely forgot about heirlooms. You can actually get a 10% XP bonus from both the chest and and the shoulders from heirlooms. Though even without heirlooms, I was leveling really fast. It's about two hours to level even in the Outlands. If you're a little bit hesitant to level in the open world right now, I would recommend it for sure. It kind of feels like retail, honestly. The mobs just melt like butter. So anyways, back to what I'm doing to catch up. Once I hit level 71, I'm gonna pump AV Weekend as hard as I can. AV Weekend starts on April 7th, but if you're watching this video later, you probably missed it. That's completely fine. I mean, open world leveling in Northrend is still really fast. Just make sure to mail yourself the Tome of Cold Weather flying at 68 so you can fly around. Being able to do those early quests with a flying mount feels like cheating. Or if you really want to cheat, you could just get a boost from 72 to 80. For me, leveling up an AV is only going to take a couple sessions. But if for whatever reason I'm too busy on my warrior, I'll just get some boost instead. I've already leveled up a few times. I really don't feel any shame in it. Okay, so let's fast forward a little bit here. You just ding level 80. What are you going to do to catch up for TOC? Well, the first thing I would do, and the thing I'm already doing, is farm as much gold as you can. Once you have gold, you're basically unlocking the entire game. You've got the BOE gear you can buy, the GDKPs, I mean, the list goes on and on. So luckily, I've actually got a full open world gold farming guide you can check out. It's got 10 of my very favorite open world gold farming spots. But if you want a TLDR, there's things like the Cyrus Steer Farm and the World Cloth Farming, the list goes on and on. We really want to make at least 5,000 gold. Actually spend some time on AD upgrades, finding a bunch of BOEs you can get. Check out my example templates with BOEs for every class below the video. If you got a friend, a guildie you can reach out to, somebody on the auction house, you can actually get these BOEs made a lot cheaper. Okay, so while you're getting those BOEs, you should also be doing Winter Grasp every three hours. The reason Winter Grasp is so insane is that you can get those 232 item level pieces. In just a few days of Winter Grasping, you can have a bunch of these extra off pieces like the Bracers. I mean, I have a confession. My Resto Druid's been using the PvP Bracer this whole time in Alduar. While you're getting your BOEs, while you're PvPing, you should also be hitting Heroic Plus. I'd recommend trying to fill out all your slots with blues or purples before you do Heroic Plus. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but people are pretty choosy when it comes to Heroic Plus groups. Heroic Plus really fixes all your gear issues at the same time. I mean, for one thing, you'll just be getting a bunch of free max level epics. And the daily Heroic Quest will give you emblems of conquest. If you check out the conquest banner, you can get so many different pieces. Of course, there's your actual Bist chest and helmet tier pieces. Plus, you can get necklaces, belts, legs, the list goes on and on. Okay, so by this point, you should definitely be ready for some Phase 1 raids. I really recommend trying to hit both the lockouts for 10 and 25 man raids. Even from the 10-man, you'll be getting that extra 25-man loot. For example, I just went to a 10-man recently on my Paladin, and I cleaned up on all that best loot. And I know some people are going to complain about this, but GDKPs are really efficient for Nax. In the Naxxramas GDKPs, it's usually a 500 gold min bin. If you've been following this guide so far, you should have enough gold to get 5 or 6 items your first raid. Speaking of my Paladin again, that's exactly what I did in a recent 25-man. I walked out of Nax with so many Bist pieces that my inventory almost overflowed. On top of all the Phase 1 raids, you should definitely be hitting Bolt of Archivon. VOA has a chance to drop your current phase Bis gear. And also, nobody even really does gear checks when it comes to VOA. Once you've done a couple weeks of phase 1 lockouts, you should be ready for Alduar. Definitely look for a run that isn't doing the hard mode, because your gear isn't quite ready for it yet. But you should be trying to do both the 10 and the 25 man lockouts each week. Again, my recommendation is definitely to hit up those GDKPs. I'm able to get upgrades a lot faster in GDKPs than I would in a typical soft res run. Well sweet, you made it, you're all caught up. But now you gotta get as prepped as possible for phase 3 or you're gonna fall behind again. Check out my phase 3 prep guide next.